Welcome to the line of sight. Here are the top news of the week. The Supreme Court delivered several important judgments this week. In the Sabarimala case, the apex court in a 3 is to 2 verdict referred the case to a seven judge constitutional bench. This means there will be no restriction to women's entry into the temple. However, the Kerala government has announced that it would not grant any protection to women between ages of 10 and 50 years. Giving a clean shit to the Narendra Modi government in a case pertaining to purchase of Rafale jets, the Supreme Court dismissed all petitions seeking review of its 2018 verdict. The Apex Court in 2018 had upheld the purchase of 36 Rafale fighter aircraft. Soon after the review pleas were quashed, several BJP leaders demanded an apology from Congress leader Rahul Gandhi for his allegations over the Rafale deal. BJP cadre even staged protests outside the Congress head office in Delhi. The Supreme Court also dropped proceedings against Rahul Gandhi in a contempt case against him for his Chaukidar Chor Hai slogan during election campaign. Rahul had tendered an unconditional apology in the Supreme Court, which accepted it and gave him a warning. In another case, the Apex Court ruled that the Office of the Chief Justice of India will come under the Right to Information Act. Justice Sanjeev Khanna, who was part of the five-judge bench, said transparency does not undermine judicial independence. Following the disposal of these cases, the Supreme Court is set to bid farewell to Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi. Gogoi is set to retire on November 17 and will be succeeded by the next senior-most judge in the Apex Court, S. A. Bobde. Amid the impasse in Maharashtra over garment formation, Governor Bharat Singh Koshiyari declared President's rule in the state. This came as Congress, NCP and Shiv Sena were working on a common minimum program to form a coalition government in the state. After the single largest party BJP refused to form government, Koshiyari had invited the Shiv Sena. However, the Uddhav Thakre-led party sought three days' time, which the governor refused. He later invited the NCP to form government. But the party too sought more time, resulting in the imposition of residence rule. Meanwhile, the Shiv Sena moved the Supreme Court against the governor's refusal to grant more time. On Friday, NCP Chief Sharad Pawar announced that the Sena-NCP Congress combined would soon form the government in Maharashtra. The presidential elections were held in Sri Lanka on Saturday, with the poll turning out to be one-on-one -on -one fight between new Democratic parties Sajid Premadasa and Gotabaya Rajabaksha of Sri Lanka People's Front. Sajid is the son of former President Ranasinghe Premadasa, while Gotabaya is a younger brother of ex-President Mahindra Rajabaksa. Amid allegations of extrajudicial killings against Gotabaya, the Tamil National Alliance extended its support to Sajid a few days before the election. However, the Sinhala Buddhist majority in the country has backed Gotabaya, intensifying the poll battle. India has defeated Bangladesh by an innings and 130 runs in the first test match in Indore. Batsman Mayank Agarwal scored his second double century in the test. His 243 runs of 330 balls helped India reach 493 runs for 6 wickets. Bangladesh were all out for 213 runs in the second innings as pacer Mohamed Shami ran through the batting order with his 4 for 31. The visitors had lost all their wickets for 150 in the first innings as Shami, Ishan Sharma, Umesh Yadav and Ravichandran Ashwin put on an impressive performance. Former Bangladesh captain Mushfikur Rahim was the only glimmer of hope for the team, scoring 43 and 64 runs in two innings. For more such videos, subscribe to the Federal's YouTube channel. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram.